whitewater. Maryland has some of the best. The Savage River, site of the 1989 Whitewater World Championships, is a classic example of the kind of fury that can be unleashed when rocks and water are put together in just the right way, creating a perfect natural slalom race course. Just hang some gates and go. But what if you wanted to have a whitewater course where there wasn't any whitewater? What if you wanted to build an artificial course, a whitewater machine? John Anderson and Scott Wilkinson, two local whitewater racers, knew the perfect place to construct an artificial whitewater course. At the Pepco Power Plant in Dickerson, Maryland, is a 900-foot sluiceway where water drawn from the nearby Potomac and used to cool the plant's generators is returned to the river warmed by 15 to 20 degrees. The Dickerson Discharge Canal was literally a whitewater course waiting to happen. An artificial slalom course is not a new idea. Quite a few exist today, though most are in Europe. During the 1972 Olympics, races were held on an artificial course in Augsburg, Germany. 20 years later, whitewater racing returns to the 92 Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. The event will be held on a newly constructed artificial course at Liceo d'Urgel. The best paddlers on the U.S. team and the team coach live and train in Maryland. Time to go. The only thing lacking was an artificial course, a training course that would give them the edge as they go for the gold. That's really good. Or if you haven't got the video, then you just, um, you're just coaching. Bill Endicott is the U.S. Olympic team coach. Yeah. I remember 10 years ago going out to Dickerson right and having practices there uh, below where we now have the course. We'd look upstream and say, gee, wouldn't it be great if we had a course up there, a real one? And uh, then we'd just laugh at each other because we knew that it was never going to happen. So it was an old idea, uh, and Anderson just made it happen. He and Wilkinson, I guess, just uh, decided to really push it. They put together a very professional proposal. I liked the idea. It seemed kind of exciting, something new and different to do with a discharge canal. It's otherwise, you know, just, it's just there. It's not being used for anything in particular. Yes, yeah, so around about early June, Dick Shakespeare, who's a plant manager here, came to me and asked uh, that he had this idea from the Bethesda Center for Excellence that we turn the Dickerson Discharge Canal into a training facility for the uh, U.S. kayak whitewater team. I must admit, my first impression was Shake Shaft had finally uh, gone around the bend and gone crazy. But uh, on reflection, uh, you know, when the word Olympics is mentioned, uh, things start to happen, and so it really went from there. The project got the green light, but there were still some big questions to be answered when you go about designing a whitewater course. How do you get the water to do what you want it to do? John Anderson, an architect by profession, relished the challenge of designing and building a whitewater machine. You got, my, you got my flip? The primary tool was a model. It was a working model with water running in it. The David Taylor Research Center was very excited about the, the whole idea, and they volunteered the use of a fabulous facility, something called the circulating water chamber, which was perfect. We tried testing single rocks in the current, and they didn't do very well. None of the rocks performed well when, when they were by themselves. So when you start putting a bunch of them together, then they all start acting together and making the water do what you want it to do. We were surprised, if anything, of how accurate the model was. Take two, hold false. Up, oh, and he's trashed again. Now, the U.S. team members had just come back from the new Olympic course over in Spain. They basically wanted us to create um, a carbon copy of the course that they're going to be racing on this summer in the Olympics. We ended up uh, creating a copy of the one biggest rapid on the Olympic course, which was called Hulk Falls. And this rapid is probably the biggest one on our course. This is a low, a low hemisphere shape. Uh, again, designed to go either on a flat or a sloping side. Once we had our design, 
that was the first step, and that was in many ways almost the easiest step, because then came the hard part, which was transferring our design on the model up to the real thing. These guys were just a whirlwind. They came in with a work crew of about 25 people and spent a total of 10 days manufacturing 75 boulders. I think what was tricky was trying to create a design for the boulders that would not be so big and heavy that the cranes would not be able to put them into the canal. This had never been done anywhere in the world before. Every other artificial course which has been built anywhere in the world has been built bone dry. John Fratangelo of Pepco supervised the construction. And now you have to remember, we built this thing with the water flowing. The water never stopped and the power plant never, never ceased generating electricity. The guys down here, I think they were all infected with wanting to win a gold medal. We did all this in three days. We were somewhat skeptical at first, but when the word Olympics is mentioned, good things seem to happen, and happen fast. We really had one mission, and that was to send the best prepared um, uh, whitewater team the world had ever seen to the Olympics. A tribute to John Anderson and to Scott Wilkinson because uh, it's almost exactly like you said it was going to be. The Dickerson Whitewater course was made possible by Pepco with the support of local contractors and businesses who generously contributed their time and skills in constructing this world-class facility. Someone once said that this whole thing was blessed. Indeed it was. <laughs> 